everyone. Welcome back to the She Gallery Show. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with us, Mino. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. You are live with us on CAN TV. Please remember that you are welcome to join us in the conversation by calling us throughout the segment at 312-738-1060. And please remember that you can always reach us. Oops, sorry. You can always reach us at our website at sharinghisenergygallery.net. You can always email us and call us if you have a story or anything you'd like to share. All right, so we're going to move on to our segment. We're very happy to be here with Osvaldo Mino Carmona. Um, Osvaldo was born in the south side of Chicago, is that right? You were born in Chicago? That's right. I was, was born in the city of Chicago, south side, on uh, 51st and Western. You were born so in the oh, south no, well, side. Oh, no, I wasn't really born there. I grew up in that neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> That's, we, we understood. Um, so I've known Mino a really long time. I've known Mino since high school. And since high school, I remember making art, making a lot of art with Mino. We were actually, and I, I wish I would have remembered to bring this, but um, we were actually voted like most artistic in, in our high school um, what do you call that? The, the yearbook. The yeah, yearbook. exactly. <laughs> we were. The yearbook. That would be cool to see sometime. So as for as long as I've known Mino, Mino's made art and he's drawn and then he stopped. And then he stopped for a really long time. And um, I thought it was really cool to see Mino work on his art again back in a few years ago, say about 2015. That's right, 2015 is when I picked it back up. Mm -hmm. So we're here to hear all about the story about why you stopped, why you started in the first place and who was your um, original main inspirations growing up in the south side of Chicago. Sure. Well, I originally stopped painting for this reason that uh, living in the south side of Chicago, it's a very hard neighborhood and, you know, things happen, family members get lost. I lost an important person in my life, which was my older brother. And due to his loss by gun violence, uh, I stopped painting and stopped drawing because I thought it wasn't important anymore for me. I felt that I needed to grow up and I needed to leave that childish mentality behind, uh, knowing that that was my true calling, so I ended up studying something else and going, you know, keeping art behind. Mm -hmm. I'm really sorry about your brother. Um, <clears throat> I didn't realize, um, I, I don't remember exactly, but I remember growing up and being in high school and, and this happening um, with your brother, and I didn't realize that it had been s in such a fresh time because you were only 16 when this happened, and he was only 18. And, um, and he was only playing basketball in the streets. It's, I mean, and he was, was his gunfire? Uh, he was actually he playing, um, he was playing hacky sack. So, you know, mm. one of the best games of hacky sack, <laughs> it, people play it. And they're in the middle of the street, and they're in a circle. And, you know, things, bullets start flying, and he happened to be one of the victims from gun violence, unfortunately. I'm really sorry. Um, as many of you know, or some of you may know, our technical engineer, who's my brother, was also a victim of, of gun violence. And it's, it's, it's real, it's serious, and it happens a lot in the city of Chicago. Not many of us get to make it, and many of us are left with stories like Mino's. Um, but there was some brightness to this, so he was one of your greatest inspirations, and unfortunately you did stop, and you thought that it was kind of childish, but fortunately you picked it back up. Did you ever think back about your brother when you picked it back up? Oh, uh, you don't, stop for I him? actually did uh, think about him when I picked it back up. Uh, I told myself was I like, doing the right moves and you know there came a time where I didn't know if I was uh, pursuing my, the right career and I just wanted to know if he would be happy for me but little did I've known that I think I was doing the right choice and thinking of him gave me more strength that I needed that I actually needed because I felt like I went to a dark era in my time at that precise when I lost him I was 16 years old you know you're going if you're, you're a, a teenager going through all these emotions hormones you're everywhere so I'm happy that I've been doing great and you know it was he gave me a lot of courage that's awesome that's good and you're probably living you know maybe some of his dreams through your art yeah so that's really you cool. know he always saw me draw when I was younger and we used to collaborate together he he would help me draw some things and you know I know that he's happy for me that's good that's important we're all really glad that you picked the back up Thank you. Um, something really interesting that you said that you said, um, you know, I need, needed to leave these childish things behind and, and pick up like a real career. Was it not something that maybe you just did for yourself or did you feel like if you were going to do this, you needed it to take it as a career step? 
or did you ever just draw for yourself? Um, I usually just drew for myself and the emotion, the happiness it gave me. I got a lot of inspiration also from my mother. She was a painter as well mm -hmm. and she would always take me to events and you know competitions and I remember one time she took me to this one competition where I was with one of the elite artists and I was just a uh, must have been like 10 or 12 years old I know I got blown out the water because <laughs> I wasn't uh, touching with my uh, imagination completely mm -hmm. and thanks to her you know she gave me the courage as well and I just did it for myself you know I've always wanted to paint for myself and much for the people but as long as it brought me happiness mm -hmm. And when did you start painting um, or taking your profession more serious, as you said? Uh, well, I started painting again at, you know, I started again at 2015, where I met this young little, a uh, young boy when I was working at, uh, at a currency exchange. Wasn't, I had just a normal job like everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, got to pay the bills. And this boy would come in and he would just talk to me while his mother waited for him at the bus. Mm -hmm. And he would show me some drawings and I was like, oh, okay, cool, that's cool. I drew something for him. He loved it. Every day this young boy, must have been nine years old, would come in and I would give him new drawings every day. And it just got me, encouraged me to continue drawing and I did little sketches here and there and people started telling me, hey, you need to go back into it. You know, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And little by little I just started drawing and painting again. And um, now that I started getting it to, uh, I took it to another level. I would have to say uh, my girlfriend Angelica, she encouraged me and pushed me to do even harder and better work for myself. So she is uh, one of the biggest inspirations that I have. That's awesome. That's awesome. So kids always bringing out this greatness, love always bringing out this greatness. Um, I really love the little boy story. H how old was the little boy? He must have been nine years old, uh, last that I recall. He was, uh, he actually, I actually met the young man the young boy at uh, 51st and Western, couldn't believe it or not, brought me, started working back in my own neighborhood and to see that kid, you know, inspired and in how where we live is such a bad neighborhood and there is still, you know, a future. It showed me that there's still hope in the child's mind that, you know, you want to be a painter and an artist. That's cool. You went back to your roots, inspired somebody from your neighborhood that could have been you, you know, a yeah. few years back. And then, um, then you mentioned Angelica. Angelica is also an artist. She's in the performance arts. That's right. That's cool. You want to talk to us a little bit more about her influence and how it's helped shape you? Uh, you know what? It's, she's done a great job influencing me. Uh, she's helped me with painting my dreams. She said, you know, what inspires you more? And I was like, my dreams. Paint them. You know, and, being, and her being part of the arts, she knows how difficult it is and the work and the struggle that needs for an artist. Who else better than your partner to be in the arts along with you as well? And, you know, ever since I started back painting again, she's been with me from the beginning from my first show that I had in Pilsen. And everywhere now, she's been my best inspiration. That's awesome. That is really important to continue to grow. And I think that it's awesome when you're working with two artists that can continue to grow together because you're really aware of how much you're growing. And, um, you know, when you're more conscious of something, I think that you, you, know, you give it a little bit more. So let's move into your actual art. And so you went from, um, when I remember, Mino, you, know, you were very influenced by, like, Disney. Um, I remember, like, Marvin the Martian. Marvin the Martian, am I saying that? Yeah, Marvin the Martian was one of my biggest inspirations. Yeah. You know, I just love sci-fi. And I just feel like his character alone, not having a mouth. <laughs> and he's talking, it's just, you know, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. I wanted to always to be in animation and work for Walt Disney. That was one of my biggest goals. And uh, I just stepped away from that because I felt that animation was cool. You know, it brings me back to my roots and brings me back to having that child imagination. And I took it a step further and started painting uh, realism dreams and my nightmares, things that inspire me now. Mm -hmm. And it's been really cool watching him grow, watching you grow from somebody that's been obviously studying something that, that influenced you when you were younger into making your own art, making your own, like you said, painting your own dreams. And um, one thing that I really admire about Mino's work is that it doesn't continue to look the same. You can tell that you're growing with your art. Thank you. You can tell it with your abstract work and with your horror work. Um, now you have some influences. Uh, you want to show us some of your sure, work? Sure, yes. A little bit about it? Okay, so we're going to go with the smaller pieces first. 
And um, you want to talk to us a little bit about how old are these pieces? Uh, these pieces are are fairly new. They're uh, I recently did them in dictionary old sheets. The dictionary sheets are made from uh, the 1990s, so they help. So I guess they didn't help me in high school as much, and they're helping me now. <laughs> uh, can we see? Can you guys see these? Like, is it? Yeah, so those are the dictionary pages, as you can see. Do you pick certain um, pages, certain words when you choose I, these I try to I try to pick some like, words. This is refill. Yeah. So, <laughs> Talk to us about refill and this, and so, this monster. So some of them are just refill my imagination with little monsters. This was a big inspiration to me. I, I was so scared of this cartoon, this movie, <laughs> thinking about monsters under your bed and taking you to a fantasy world. I mean, it was, it was just wild. And... Painting my my movies, night uh, scary movies, helped me develop what I paint now. My fears, you know, you know, uh, painting my fears. So I used to be real scared of this monster. Wow! And now you're painting this monster, and it's no longer scary. No, it's no longer scary. It's a part of my childhood. Facing your fears. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you have any other work here that you want to Yeah, you know, this is another one, one of my classic, one of the classic movies. I guess everyone could relate to this one, The Exorcist. Uh, who wasn't scared of The Exorcist who back then? Who was in? not afraid of The Exorcist? Yeah, and I just feel like these movies inspired me to uh, paint the, the deep mind horror that we all have inside that we're all scared to talk about or paint. Why this scene in particular? Do you remember this scene? Yeah, I love this scene. This is, one, this is the first scene where he comes to the house and he feels the evilness. Who's this, the out. priest? That's the priest. So... I remember this one and it just inspires me. Like every time you go somewhere, the first thing that you do is uh, stare at it. Like contemplating, do I really want to go in here? What's behind this? Or what's going to happen? And I think this piece is a oh, powerful piece. We have a caller. Caller, what's your question? Good evening. We got one place in Chicago that's really being unutilized. That's the uh, Art Institute of Chicago. And I am a visually impaired person, and I went to the uh, art museum a little while ago, and I enjoyed myself. Only one bad thing, like a visually impaired person like to touch things. And being at the uh, art museum, you can't really touch too many things, you know. But I just, I just had to make that comment, you know, because uh, there is visually impaired people. There are even totally blind people that do uh, that sculpture uh, pieces as well. That's true. Thank you. Thank you. That's Thank you so true. much. That is true. You know what? That just gave me an idea. I should make uh, paintings for people visual impaired to uh, touch. Hopefully, we can have a show with that or a gallery show where we can invite people like that. Uh, I think art is meant to be shared all for everyone, not just for people who could just see it and not touch it. That's awesome. So thank you, caller. <laughs> Leaving thank us you with so some much. Work. Awesome. So we're going to get back to The Exorcist. <laughs> oh, sorry. Or we're going to get back to your work. So I just wanted to ask you, is this ink drawn or what do you use? Uh, some of it's ink, but mostly it's acrylic paint. It's uh, usually acrylic paint on these particular pieces. Okay. Another thing that um, that's really cool about Mino's work is that a lot of it looks like stencils, which is a lot easier to use, but he does not use stencils. Yeah, I get that a lot. So thank you for that. <laughs> that's really cool. You want to show us some more of your work? Sure. Uh, I can show you some of my newest pieces that I have. These are oh, uh, this one right here. Before this, we move into it, sure. Hands. This is another classic movie that inspired me. Uh, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. You know, um, I have a big. I'm a huge fan of Tim Burton, and I feel like Beetlejuice was just out there for all the wild kids and all the Halloween scares and the imaginations of what happens after death. You know, and I've always had that that idea of what can really happen after that. Do you stay alive? Do you stay as a ghost? And this movie was just so awesome. It was. And um, these scenes that you're picking from these classic movies, they're not, they're not um, scenes that you will pick out, like for The Exorcist or something. You may pick out one of those more like common ones that you would see, you know, the girl throwing up or gory or Beetlejuice where you have the actual Beetlejuice rolling. So it's really cool that you're picking out these specific scenes that meant something to you in your own childhood. Yeah, you know, some of them mean some ch from childhood memories and some I pick out from uh, what I think 
from how I'm living my life right now. Mm -hmm. uh, this piece right here is inspiration from my childhood movies that inspired me, but it also reminds me of how goofy they were as a couple, and mm -hmm. it reminds me how goofy I am with my couple. And we are pretty goofballs when we were together and love to have fun. So this is a scene that reminded me of us. Oops. Oh boy, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. That's the scene. <laughs> yeah, that's the scene that reminds me. So sweet. Yeah, I, I was. I told her that was me and that was her. And that's cool. So you have more work that you want to show? Yeah, some of these are some of my new pieces that I did. Uh, these are some of the ones that inspired by um, from my dreams. Mm -hmm. So I have this piece right here that inspires me a lot. Uh, ever had a nightmare where you wake up in the middle of the night and you go into the washroom and um, you're picking your face for some particular reason and it's coming off and little by little your face is being ripped off. Some of the nightmares that I have, pretty dark images. Are these actual nightmares that you've had? Yeah, these are actual nightmares where I wake up in the middle of the night and I walk into the washroom and I see myself and I see a cut or something on my, on my face and then I touch it and it's scabbing and you're just picking at it and you go crazy. Wow, that's really interesting. We do a yeah. lot of dream interpretation. We'll check that one out after, um, yeah. after the show. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I have a... Uh, and <clears throat> I'm glad that I started painting them because these are the paintings that I paint for myself. Mm -hmm. Do they help you? Yeah, you know, it, cope, it helps me cope because I, I think about a lot of things that happen at night and you and it just helps me open up my mentality and my mind to what's going on in my head instead of holding it and not saying it or not sharing it i feel that if i put it down in, in ink uh people could see what's going on and i could finally let it out cool. what other work do you have that you want to show us uh, this is another one that i have where i like to paint a lot of women uh faces and elderly people uh this is a, a piece where a woman's being sucked in by darkness and she's coming out from the dark. Oops. Sorry, I just wanted to show the detail. So you have really great detail. Thank you so much. Yeah, so she's coming out of the darkness and the wind's blowing, but all you can see is her face as she's slowly coming out. Who is she? Uh, you know, she's just the person I've seen in my dream. Some dreams that I have I just get pictures and scenes and I always wonder why I get those dreams and who are these people but the only thing I can do is put them in on paper wow yeah you can see on her face that she's just coming out so is this a series of dreams that you've created here yes yeah, so it's a series of dreams that I'm having uh, that I'll be having soon up in display okay so this is for uh, an exhibition that you're working for Yes. And it's all a series of your dreams? Yeah, I call it uh, The Dark Side. Okay, okay. So this is the show that's coming up. And if, if any of you are interested in, in checking out more of Mino's work and, and visiting his webs or his uh, art exhibition, his upcoming art exhibition, you can always contact us. Um, of course, now I'm going to get the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> you can always go to sharinghisenergygallery.net and you can always contact all of our previous artists directly on our website. So that is going to be sharing his energy gallery dot net, and here you can visit all of our all of our previous guests directly. So here shortly you'll be able to see Mino and the information to his upcoming um, art exhibition. And hopefully you can check it out. It'll be here right in the neighborhood. So show us a little bit more about your of your work, some more sure. stuff that you brought. Uh, I do have some other pieces where I do yeah, like so to. Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, this is some inspired by memories of childhood games, and I'm starting to paint back. These are I do do colorful artwork as well, and a mixture of palette and knife using. But this is something I want to bring out: childhood memories of every every person remember these games. Like if you were a child, Nintendo, Atari, and some of my favorite games were on here. So I do do a lot of colorful artwork as well. Super colorful. Super colorful. It's uh, I like you said, my artwork's always changing, and I'm always jumping from uh, different styles. That is very different. Very different from from the earlier work that you showed us. So you showed us some of your inspirations from your from the movies, and then from your own dreams, and now from your own childhood. 
childhood memories. Yeah, it's like I'm bringing back everything that I uh, put behind. Mm -hmm. And I'm putting it in, on ink and paper. What does this say here? Are these um, actual experiences that we're having? Uh, no, those are actual the date I did it on. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I did this one in uh, the 25th. September? Yeah, September 25th, 2017. Keeping everything really present. Yeah, you know, you got to nowadays. Uh, without our dates, we're, we're going to be lost. Cool. So you've always painted. Has painting been your your um, your field, or do you, do you also draw? I draw and I paint, but more than likely now I'm going to, uh, I'm doing more paintings than drawing and sketches. Mm -hmm. I want to build up to have uh, my own personal gallery and do, uh, advance to doing murals and city, uh, city buildings. So it's one of my main goals to be doing, that I want to do. Mm -hmm. So when, um, when you decided to start taking your career seri more serious as an artist, you quit your job, you quit the regular 9 to 5. And now you're a full-time artist. Yes. Can you talk to us about what that's been like for you that's brave? <laughs> uh, you know what? It's very brave. Uh, I didn't think I would have the, the guts to do it. I actually had to uh, go to someone and, and ask, you know, what do you think about this? I was given the opportunity by another f local artist. Um, some of you guys might know him. Uh, Lanzo Tapia. You know, Torres Tapia. He paints. He has a, his own gallery. And he told me one day, hey, do you want to do this full-time? And I said... I don't know, you know, it's a risk. I have a job, a full-time job, benefits, everything, an apartment. Um, then I talked to my partner and I was like, what do you think? And she was like, well, you know, you only get one chance at it. And like, either you jump or, and fly, you know, you're going to jump, you're going to jump. So, and I said, well, let me, let's do it, you know. It's a risk we're going to take. We only get, we only have one life. Let's take this risk. And it's been a struggle, but, you know, it's been a great experience. I've been having shows. Uh, people have been viewing my artwork, I've been selling my artwork, and it's just been a big journey, and I'm happy that I have someone with me who uh, keeps me grounded. That's awesome. What are some inspirational words or some words of wisdom or some words of advice that you may give others that might be on the fence about leaving their, their, um, their security, their secure job with their secure insurance um, um, to follow their dreams? You know what, I'm going to tell you, whatever makes you happy, do it. Uh, Everything's not meant to be easy. If it was, everyone would be doing it. It's a path. You have to do your own path. And uh, if it makes you happy, you know, it's going to make you happy. You are going to struggle, but uh, your parachute will open. And just keep going at it and don't give up. Don't give up on your dreams. That's awesome. And sometimes we find the inspiration from, from the little ones. I feel like children are always inspiring us. You should pay attention to what the little ones have to say. Um, or do because it was a kid that brought you out from from a dark cloud, from a dark, long, long dark cloud. I remember, um, you know, hanging out with Mino. We all grew up together. And Mino, why don't you draw? I'd always be sketching. Like, Mino, why don't you draw? Why don't you draw? And he was just like, eh. Yeah. And then, like, to see him up and, like, full throttle. I'm like, what did I miss? But yay. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> That's awesome. I took Congratulations. off. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Congratulations. And where do you see yourself in five years? You said that you want to have your own gallery? I want to have a building where I have my own gallery. I want to have it here in the south side of Chicago. Uh, we don't have enough galleries on the south side. I'm trying to bring the arts back. You obviously have to go to up north or downtown, and I just want to bring it to the south side kids. You know, they need their artwork, too. Yeah. And hopefully that keeps them busy and keeps their dreams alive. Thank you. That's very important. And you also worked with children in the past. Yes, I worked for uh, for some organization where we help out kids with, with artwork and uh, teaching them different cultures using art. Mm -hmm. So that's also really important. So you're a teaching artist, you're an inspiring artist, and you have a lot more to show us. Um, so we'll look forward to hearing more about Mino and all of his work. Please remember that you can always contact us and look, contact all of our, our previous guests um, directly on our website. Um, please also remember that we do have an art exhibition happening right now at, at, um, at Elephant Room Gallery. And that is for winning participant Lauren Fees. That was from the Chicago Cultural Center. And we did just recently have a workshop and, and an artist talk. So that is going to be coming down this weekend. 
If anybody wants to schedule a visit, please give us a call. We're also working on a performance art fundraising show this July, so we're looking for poets. Um, children, welcome. Thank you, Mino. Awesome. Thank you, Thank for you so much for having us. me. See you guys next week. We'll be here again with Sherry Rush.